Hello everyone. Today we're going to dive into a topic that has fascinated space enthusiasts for decades, why we don't go to the moon anymore. From the exhilarating days of the Apollo missions to the present, we'll explore the reasons behind our shift in focus and what the future might hold for lunar exploration. Let's dive right in. The 1960s and early 1970s were an era of intense space race competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Apollo program launched by NASA aimed to land humans on the moon and safely bring them back to Earth. The program's most famous mission, Apollo 11, saw astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the lunar surface on July 20, 1969, marking a historic achievement for humanity. Between 1969 and 1972, six Apollo missions successfully landed on the moon, with Apollo 17 being the last in December 1972. So why did we stop going to the moon after the success of the Apollo missions? There are several key reasons for this shift. One of the main reasons is the enormous cost of lunar missions. The Apollo program was incredibly expensive, costing approximately $25.4 billion at the time, which is equivalent to over $150 billion today. With the economic pressures of the Vietnam War and domestic programs, the U.S. government found it difficult to justify the continued expense of lunar exploration, especially after achieving the primary goal of landing on the moon. After the initial excitement of the moon landings, public interest began to wane. The missions were no longer seen as groundbreaking as the first landing, and the American public and government shifted their focus to other issues and priorities. NASA redirected its efforts toward other scientific endeavors, such as the Skylab space station, the space shuttle program, and robotic missions to explore other parts of the solar system. While the Apollo missions provided valuable scientific data and samples, Many scientists argued that robotic missions could achieve similar objectives at a fraction of the cost. Robotic missions like the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and Mars rovers have provided significant scientific insights without the need for human presence. This shift allowed NASA to explore a wider range of celestial bodies and conduct in-depth studies of planets, moons, and asteroids. While we haven't sent humans to the moon in nearly five decades, the interest in lunar exploration has never truly faded. Several factors are driving renewed efforts to return to the moon. NASA's Artemis program aims to return humans to the moon around the year 2025. The program plans to land the first woman and the next man on the lunar surface, with a focus on sustainable exploration. The goal is to establish a long-term human presence on the moon, paving the way for future missions to Mars and beyond. In addition to NASA, other countries and private companies are showing increased interest in lunar exploration. The European Space Agency, ESA, Russia, China, and India have all outlined plans for lunar missions. China, in particular, has made significant strides with its Chang'e program, including landing a rover on the far side of the moon. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are also developing technology to support lunar missions. Returning to the moon offers numerous scientific and economic opportunities. The moon's surface holds clues about the early solar system and the formation of planets, it also contains valuable resources, such as water ice, which could be used to support human missions and even fuel spacecraft for journeys beyond the moon. Additionally, the moon could serve as a testing ground for technologies needed for long-duration space exploration, such as habitats, life support systems, and resource utilization. While we haven't sent humans to the moon in decades, the reasons for this decision are rooted in economic, political, and scientific considerations. However, with new technological advancements, international collaboration, and commercial interest, we are on the brink of a new era of lunar exploration. The return to the moon holds the promise of new discoveries, scientific breakthroughs, and the potential to pave the way for humanity's journey to Mars and beyond. We hope you found this exploration of why we stopped going to the moon informative and thought-provoking. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content.